Peggy Fleming, Cheech Marin, and the great Gretzky take us down memory lane. All this plus our Silly Inventors Hall of Fame, next on Memories Then and Now. Sun comes up, sun goes down, I goes on while the world goes round. It's a story that's been running for a thousand years. Faces change, but not the hopes and fears. They say life goes on, and you can't go back again. Hello, I'm Chuck Scarborough. And I'm Katherine Kinley. Our memories of each passing decade are shaped by what we've seen on television or in the movies. And when we dust them off and hold them up to today's harsh light, we usually discover there are people inside. We remember places and things, but our memories are filled with names and faces. To anyone who lived through the early 1970s, the name Patty Hearst brings back a flood of memories. A scared teenager kidnapped from her college apartment by terrorists. Then a hardened revolutionary defiantly waving a machine gun in bank security cameras. Patty Hearst's amazing story reads like the Hollywood scripted eventually became. But whatever happened to the rich girl turned revolutionary? We find out in our first memory called, Where Are They Now? Her story begins in February 1974. The Way We Were by Barbara Streisand is the song of the year, and the movie of the same title tugs at our heartstrings. But the big screen also reflects a changing society. Serpico shows us the dark underbelly of police corruption, while The Exorcist paves the way for horror movies to come. Amen. America is hungry for gas. We wait long hours in line as the first OPEC embargo hits home. To conserve fuel, President Nixon signs into law the 55 mile per hour speed limit. What? Streaking is the latest rage, and for the more discreet, the new string bikini becomes the hot resort wear. Then suddenly, 19 year old Patricia Hearst, granddaughter of newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst, is abducted from her bullet riddled Berkeley, California apartment. FBI agent Charles Bates is in charge of the investigation. It was a legitimate kidnapping. Several people were injured. Several people were hurt, beaten. She was carried screaming out of the house. Shots were fired in the house. Clandestine communiques tell us she's been kidnapped by an unknown terrorist group called the Symbionese Liberation Army. After being locked in a closet for 57 days, Patty Hearst breaks the silence with a shocking announcement. She now calls herself Tanya, and a security camera photographs her robbing the Hibernia Bank in San Francisco. Most think she was coerced, until another tape arrives. My gun was loaded, and at no time did any of my comrades intentionally point their guns at me. Then we speculate that she was brainwashed, but Patty scoffs at that, too. I am obviously alive and well. As for being brainwashed, the idea is ridiculous to the point of being beyond belief. Patty is now a self-professed member of the SLA and has become a fugitive from the law. When police shoot it out with the SLA in their Los Angeles hideout, no one knows at first if Patty Hearst is among the dead. Later, we find out she isn't. At the same time as the shootout, Patty and two SLA members were busy attempting to rob Mel's Sporting Goods in Los Angeles, and Patty sprays the store with bullets to protect her comrades. The saga of the kidnapped heiress turned terrorist ends in this house in San Francisco, where the FBI finally arrests a terrified Patty Hearst. The man in charge of tracking her down looks back. The most memorable thing to me over the 19 and a half months that we were looking for Patty was the day we arrested her. And it kind of culminated all of our efforts over a long period of time. And uh, it gave me a, a great sense of satisfaction because uh, I'd been asked practically every day for 19 and a half months, why can't you catch Patty Hearst? And I said, I can't. I get, just can't tell you when. Patty goes on trial for the Hibernia bank robbery. She's found guilty and sentenced to seven years in prison. She serves 22 and a half months when her sentence is commuted by President Jimmy Carter. What's the first thing you want to do when you get home? Uh, have breakfast.
breakfast with my family and friends, and I'm going to go there now and thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Patty returns home to put her life in order. Surprisingly, she marries Bernard Shaw, her court-appointed guard. They have two children and now live quietly in Connecticut. Recently, she started a career as an actress and appeared in the movie Crybaby. But today, as she looks back, the days of Tanya are never far away. My memories of what happened are the same as yours, the photographs of the bank camera. It was just so clear in people's minds when they thought about the bank robbery. Maybe it was those memories that prompted Patty Hearst to call her captor, Agent Bates, recently, after not talking to him for more than 10 years. I recognized her voice. I said, Patty? <laughs> she said, yeah. So I, I felt good about it. I really did. I uh, had a lot of feeling about Patty Hearst. And I think, I, I'm really convinced from what we knew at the time, that if we hadn't have caught her when we did, she would have been killed. Nearly two decades later, Patty still feels she was unfairly victimized by both the SLA and the courts. I feel that the SLA got a really great deal. They kidnapped me. They sent out a lot of tapes, um, many people. In fact, there was a time when most people accepted everything that was on those tapes mm -hmm. at face value. Uh, I was tried, convicted. None of the other SLA members were tried for the bank robbery. And I, I just feel like that was their day and that was their time. And how does she cope today with the memories of the way she was then? It took, oh, I don't even know how long <laughs> to finally just come to terms with the fact that, yes, I had been brainwashed. And no, that's not an unusual thing to have happen to you if you've been locked in a closet for 57 days and, and subjected to the kind of abuses I was subjected to. And, you know, at once I could accept that, I really could get on with my life. The way we Emily Harris, the only two surviving members of the SLA, each spent eight years in prison for their crimes. They still live in the San Francisco Bay Area. When we return, the great Gretzky, Peggy Fleming, and Cheech Marin take us down memory lane. But before we go, take a look at this high school yearbook photo from Garden Grove High School in Garden Grove, California. The year is 1963. Then, this graduating senior was a junior class vice president and cheerleader. Today, he gets cheers for his hilarious television and movie roles. We'll give you his name when Memories Then and Now returns. Memories Then and Now, sponsored in part by Uncle Ben's Country and Rice Dishes, inspired by the finest inns. From the recipes of great country inns come Country and Rice Dishes, authentic rice recipes packed with rich creamy cheeses or ripe kitchen cut vegetables. Delicious Country Inn Rice Dishes from Uncle Ben's. I won't wear anything without Cross Your Heart. Because great looks start with Cross Your Heart. With crisscross shaping, I always look better. The Cross Your Heart bra. Great looks start with Cross Your Heart from Playtex. The fit that makes the fashion. Last year, thousands of people got rid of their old refrigerator to buy the new Maytag refrigerator guaranteed to the year 2000. Until April 1st, the rest of you have a chance. Buy one, and if it stops working before the year 2000, we'll buy it back. See a Maytag dealer for details. See a Maytag repairman in our commercials. The Maytag refrigerator, it's guaranteed to the year 2000. This offer expires April 1st. Oh, mama, don't feed me no baloney. I don't want no ham and cheese. I want something hot and hotty. I want a man which please. Don't feed me no baloney. Oh, yeah. I want a man with cheese. No, 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 I'm not talking turkey. I want a bigger deal. Don't feed me just a sandwich. I want a man with me. Don't feed me no baloney. Oh, I want a man with me. No, no, don't feed me no baloney. Oh, yeah. I, I want, want a man with me. Welcome back. Before the break, we showed you this yearbook photo from Garden Grove High School's class of 63. This young senior has since graduated to the big time as a comedian and actor. If you haven't guessed his name yet, well, excuse me, it's Steve Martin. Buried in his jammies. God, a condo made a 
stoner. <laughs> Well, we can't say for sure whether trying out his now famous King Tut routine on Saturday Night Live is one of Steve Martin's fondest memories. But we do have the revealing recollections of three other celebrities who are about to escort us down memory lane. We begin our trip down memory lane with Wayne Gretzky. At 28, he was already hailed as the Great Gretzky after he became the highest scoring player in National Hockey League history. The Los Angeles Kings superstar has held the spotlight since he became a pro hockey player at the tender age of 17. Hockey was a family affair in the Gretzky home. One of his first goalies was his grandmother. And under the watchful eye of his father and first coach, Wayne practiced constantly on the backyard ice rink. But one of his fondest childhood memories had nothing to do with a hockey puck. I enjoyed TV. I watched a lot of TV. I probably, growing up, my favorite show as a kid was The Brady Bunch. I don't know, I guess the fact that it was a family atmosphere and it was entertaining and it was fun, I guess I enjoyed that part. The Brady Bunch, the Brady Bunch, that's the way they became the Brady Bunch. Remember, remember, remember. Peggy Fleming never shot goals, but few could match her for grace and elegance on ice. And when the former Olympic gold medalist turned professional, she added glamour to her repertoire. She's since gone on to become a TV host and commentator, and once thought of becoming a school teacher. Like Gretzky, Fleming also has a fond TV memory. Well, I think because I, I love family so much, I, I love to watch the show Father Knows Best, because I just love that atmosphere, the, the fun that they had, and the good examples, and good things that they talked about and, and represented. Robert Young. Billy Gray and Lauren Chapin in Father Knows Best. Remember, 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 remember. Richard Cheech Marin and Tommy Chong are best remembered for their drug humor in the 1978 film Up in Smoke. By the time the smoke had cleared, the pair had scored a $22 million sleeper. After a few more movies together, Cheech went solo in 1987 with Born in East L.A. And who's the president of the United States? The, the, the cowboy guy on TV. Uh, the guy was on Death Valley days. Um, was, uh, John Wayne. Get him out of here. The son of a Los Angeles policeman, Cheech remembers being mystified and delighted by other funny fellows growing up. When I was a kid, TV was very first coming into, into view, and, and my, my aunt had a big, a small TV. Actually, it was about that small, and the screen was, it looked like a, a, a fish aquarium. It was green, and you used to look through it every day and see these howdy-doody puppets, man. It was like watching them, you know, like they were clothes drying or something. Say, kids, what time is it? <laughs> Boys and girls at home and kids in the gallery, let's go. We'll be right back with Sonny and Cher after this. But first, here's another yearbook photo to figure out while we're gone. The year is 1971, T.R. Robinson High School in Tampa, Florida. Then, this Husky senior's photo page was empty. Now he signs his own pictures as a nationally known sports star. We'll be right back with his name after this. We tried this creative visualization diet. Yeah, you were supposed to imagine this with a cheeseburger. Well, we had no problem imagining one calorie diet A&W cream soda and root beer were rich and delicious. Mm, jelly donut. Yum. Diet A&W. There's just more to it. How many pancakes have you eaten? Uh, no way. Oh, yes, she did, because Mom switched to Bisquick. They're light and fluffy, and Bisquick doesn't have cholesterol. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? She knew that. Bisquick makes the day's pancakes. Mama keeps yellow dandy like a dandelion. Oh, you know I love my mama. Clorox 2 Color Safe Bleach cleans, makes colors pop better than detergent alone. Mama's got the magic of Clorox 2. Professional plumbers on professional strength liquid plumber. You gotta have something that'll go right to the problem real fast. It'll work on the clog and get it open. I used it myself Saturday night. <laughs> the best liquid drain opener is in the gray bottle. Professional strength liquid. The fresh scent of era. How fresh is it? Era. Fresh.
fresh and clean as the air after a spring shower. What do you say to mustard, to barbecue, to grass? Let the protein power of ERA do the talking. And just say, scram. ERA reigns over stains. Stay tuned for more memories then and now. Hardee's has burgers, and they have burgers, and they have burgers. Hardee's has fries, and they have fries, and they have fries. Hardee's has shakes, and they have shakes, and they have shakes. Hardee's has fresh fried chicken, and they have... Hardee's introduces Roy Rogers' recipe fresh fried chicken. Cooked in 100% vegetable oil. We've got it. They don't. Hardee's, all kinds of good stuff. Welcome back. Before the break, we showed you a yearbook photo from T.R. Robinson High School's class of 1971. Today, this friendly-looking guy is the star of a decidedly unfriendly sport. Wrestling. We know him as Hulk Hogan. Professional wrestling is the way to go, man. That one-on-one -on -one combat, instead of punching a time clock every day, I could go in the gym and punch a punching bag and make a lot of money if I was good. The year Hulk Hogan graduated from high school, a new variety program debuted on national TV. It was called the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, and it featured a husband and wife team whose quick-witted repartee and finger-snapping musical numbers made them an instant hit. Next, we remember Sonny and Cher, then, together at center stage for the 60s, now split up and more popular than ever. Then is August 1965. At the top of the pop charts, a young and undiscovered couple whose song of love goes solid gold. They say I love won't pay the rent before it does. Our money is up in When I, when Sonny and I got together, he was 28 and I was 16. For me, I thought he was the tower, the pillar of strength and, and maturity and intelligence. They say I love Sonny was working for a man named Phil Spector, who did a lot of, he did the Righteous Brothers and the Ronettes, and he wrote Spanish Harlem and Be My Baby, and uh, just a million songs. Sonny was working for Philip, and one night, one of the girls that sang back, back Up didn't come in, she just didn't show up. And Philip looked down at me, he said, Sonny said, you can sing. And while I was about to explain to him what I felt wh were my qualifications, he said, I just want noise, get out there. You know, there's that certain look of determination or that certain determination that some people have that's recognizable. And in a way, if you analyze it, uh, you know they're not to be denied. And Cher had that. I Got You, Babe established Sonny and Cher as pop stars and leaders of the growing flower power movement. But they were not able to hang on to popularity in the fickle rock world. The focus in music changed to acid rock and left Sonny and Cher behind. Suddenly Sonny and Cher were finished as rock stars. Uh, the music changed, a drug culture came in, and um, we got corny. Sonny, who had started out as a record promoter, knew the act had to find a new direction to survive. The new direction was TV, and their early 70s shows shot them to the top of the entertainment heap once again. Each week, they mixed slapstick and music to become America's first mainstream hippies. You know what it is? You know, when you, when you look great, you sing great. <laughs> you better change your clothes. Your suit sounds terrible. We were America's rebels uh, and America's hippies. I, I don't think there was uh, any long hairs then, you know except for us, and Mostly we were just Get it? Uh -huh. shocking the world. How do you like them apples? <laughs> but offstage, there was trouble brewing for Sonny and Cher, and one day everything fell apart. I thought we have like a number five television show, and I hate my life. So I just left. And I just said, son, this is it. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I think Cher kind of has summed it up herself by, by going on getting rid of a last name, getting rid of everything, and saying, share. Share's name is now a household word. She's returned to the top of the charts with her music and has a string of successes at the box office. 
topped off with an Academy Award for Moonstruck. Snap out of it! Sonny snapped out of it, too. He's back better than ever as mayor of Palm Springs. But what about Sonny and Cher the act? When they made their first public appearance together in 10 years on David Letterman's show, the magic was still there. Now, now, what do you think about this? Is this, is this any kind of, uh, does it bring back any kind of emotions, any kind of tensions for you? I feel nothing. Because you guys... <laughs> Because you guys are, you still maintain an amicable relationship, right? We have, you know, I think Sonny and I have, we were talking about this on the telephone, we have a very strange relationship that no one will ever understand except us. And, and I don't think I even understand it a lot. I don't either. All right. Do you, do you, oh, I ever... loved Sonny and Cher. I mean, I can stand outside and say that, that I really loved the act. I always did. The chances of Sonny and Cher ever getting together again are pretty small. But we'll reunite with you right after this short break. So stick with us because we've got 40 years of the silliest inventions you've ever seen. The memories then and now returns. Hey, moms, it's Christmas at the Kool-Aid Wacky Warehouse Mall. What? Christmas in September? That's what makes it so wacky. I want to give you a head start on a wild Christmas. To get this and lots of other wild stuff in time for your kid's Christmas and my personal Christmas card with five bonus points inside, fill out a Wacky Warehouse order form and send in the wacky points from Kool-Aid Soft Drinks by November 1st. Your wacky season's greeting will be on the way. From the Kool-Aid Wacky Warehouse Mall, the wackiest mall of all. Oh, Garfield, I've got some <clears throat> cat food for you. Cat food? I'm fasting. What's the matter? Are you fasting or something? Is there an echo in here? Hey, Garfield, this is Alpo cat food, loaded with proteins from meat, fish, poultry, dairy products, and grain sources. The same Alpo cat food mm. you went crazy for. But you're fasting. Right. <clears throat> Pretty fast, huh? Alpo cat food, the first and only cat food nutritious enough for Alpo and good enough for me. A tampon's got to feel comfortable. It's a fact. When women who use cardboard applicators tried Playtex plastic applicator, they said, It's more comfortable, because Playtex is smooth and rounded. Playtex tampons, the protection to choose. When you know the facts. How many pancakes have you eaten? Uh, no way. Oh, yes, she did, because Mom switched to Bisquick. They're light and fluffy, and Bisquick doesn't have cholesterol. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? She knew that. Bisquick makes the day's pancakes. Memories Then and Now has been brought to you by Cholesterol-Free Bisquick for today's light, fluffy pancakes. Every year, more than 100,000 new inventions receive patents from Washington, but not all of them work out. We dug into our video and film file and came up with the worst of them. And here they are in the segment of our show we affectionately call Oops. Our first invention was created to easily calm a crying baby, but for some reason it never caught on. The inventor of this gasoline-powered jogging machine thought he had a winner, too. After all, most of us could use a little help getting our tired muscles going in the morning. We are ready to demonstrate my invention, the automatic life safety boat. And not to appear sacrilegious, but we all know people who act as if they could walk on water. Well, one intrepid inventor might have had those folks in mind when he crafted this unique device. Other inventors have had water on their minds, or should we say water on their brains, too. In fact, the wet stuff plays a large part in many wonderfully crazy creations. Either the water comes out, or the invention falls into it. Now, there is a serious side to being a mechanical missionary. Spending a lot of time on something that will end up in pieces on the ground can be frustrating, especially if you're in it. But inventing a gadget the world isn't quite ready for may be worse. 
And now take the case of the poor guy who went to all the trouble of building a mechanical horse, only to discover he'd started with the wrong animal. The smart money was in bulls. It's enough to make you want to kick yourself. And yep, you got it. Somebody even invented a machine for that. Now, if you know anyone who needs a good kick in the pants, that last invention can be found in Croatan, North Carolina. And if you got a kick out of this show, visit us next time. <laughs> We've got a warehouse full of memories to share with you. And remember, though you can't go back again... Like an old sweet song with a strong refrain. The memories remain. remain. Bye -bye. I got you, babe. Pay yourself, love, won't pay the rent. Before it's out, I've got money. I guess that's so we don't have a pot, but at least I'm sure of all the things we got.